everyone. Welcome to another episode of Beyond Focus TV. I'm your host, Victoria Steve, and I have a fantastic show for you tonight. Faith and spirituality has and always will be an important topic in our community, so stay tuned. We have Prophet Frank Udo, founder and president of Christ Peace Ministries, as our guest tonight. But first, a quick break. We'll be Beyond right Focus back. Focus TV allows you to discuss contemporary topics affecting the Caribbean people on both the national and local level. The show features informed guests who offer insight, debate, and evaluate various issues. Beyond Focus TV builds on the station's mission to provide useful information to the Caribbean people in New York and abroad. Beyond Focus TV, where our viewing audience can get educated, informed, and empowered. Welcome back to Beyond Focus TV. I'm your host, Victoria Steve, sitting with with Prophet Frank Udo. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Welcome. So, um, how how do I uh, address you, Prophet Frank or Prophet Frank Udo? Uh, I am a I am a prophet by calling. Nice. Um, I was born a prophet. Beautiful. Beautiful. So, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I am originally from Africa, and um, started prophesying at the age of nine, and um, all through my life I have been living as a prophet but actually encountered christ and the holy ghost at age 14 oh, wow. and um it's been like that and i've been around about 30 countries uh, 30 nations of the world countries of the world preaching jesus christ nice so you understood your calling at a really young age how yeah. did you know did you have like a lot of prophets in your family or did you just know this was your calling uh, according to my mom's um uh, the story she told me and um, said I am a child that came after two miscarriages and uh, she uh, she went into a covenant and a, a prophet came into, a man of God came into their church, the Assemblies of God Church and um, and gave her a prophetic word that uh, you're going to have a child and that child was going to be a child that will be mightily used by God and according to the word of the man of God um, after a short while, she she got in, she took in, and that was how I came. And um, it happened. It started like a a drama. I wouldn't really understand, but I I know that I started hearing stuff that were not normal to the physical man. Mm. I started also seeing stuff. And sometimes in the dream, sometimes I would just get to know stuff. And that, and as I began to tell people about what, what I was seeing. Some took it serious, some never took it serious because I was just a young poor boy who had no uh, no definition of what what he was doing, you know. Mm. And uh, but as time began, as time uh, as, we, as I began to grow in God, and things begin to uncover itself, and that's why I am today. Nice. So for those who don't who are not familiar with like um, religion, what exactly is prophesizing? Prophesizing is speaking the mind of God. Mm. Uh, what is first? You must understand that life is spiritual, and until you understand the systems of life, you really cannot have good life. Um, prophesying is having access to the spiritual realm, the deep things of God, the mind of God, and bringing it into um, physical manifestation. So, a prophet is one who connects the spiritual with the physical. Okay, so you like the the connecting? Yes. Nice. The middleman. Nice, nice. Yeah. So, starting at a young age, were you um, overwhelmed? Because you know, at me at fourteen, I w wasn't doing anything like that. Like, were you overwhelmed at such a young age with uh, this gift? I didn't really take it serious at the beginning. To be precise, I didn't take it. I didn't see it as anything that will take me to where I am today in life. Mm. All I was just concerned was living life, and um, uh, I, would, I wouldn't say I would, yes at the point when I started, when I understood my purpose, I had to deal with people unbelief. Mm. You know, some had different definition of me, some called me different names by their perspective. You see, people would always define you by their own understanding, mm. and I had to battle with that, wrestle with that, and to make it complicated, even more compli uh, complicated. I, I I was actually in a church that never believed in the prophetic ministry. Mm. I remember one of the Sundays um, at that inf at that infant stage of the prophetic, uh, I lacked that wisdom to um, to manage the presence of God when it comes. 
So when it comes, the, the frequency of the spirit was uh, sometimes overwhelming on my body. And sometimes I would move around, I would push people and so on and so forth. I remember one Sunday precisely, I, I, we were in this church. This church was not just growing. And um, the church was over 20 years. And it was just between back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And one Sunday service, uh, we were having regular Sunday service and the spirit of God came on me so strong mm. and I was so immature and the Lord said go to the treasurer of the church tell her, that, tell her to release the destiny of people in the church and she was actually the one keeping money and uh, people's offerings and tithes oh. in the church wow. and I walked left I left from where I was and I told her God said if you don't release the people's destiny uh, you're going to die so that didn't really go down well with my <laughs> Yeah, pastor. I can imagine. Yeah. How old were you when you said this to this uh, woman? I was yet to be 15. <laughs> uh, 15 you know, like, little yeah. boy. <laughs> yeah, little boy. Yeah, you're, you're going to die. And uh, so, you know, I was yet to be 15, a little bit more than more after 15, uh, 15 years or thereabout. So, and um, I remember the pastor taking me into the. The, the, in, those, in those churches they have an office at the back side of the altar mm -hmm. and he, he took me in his name was Pastor Brassi I believe some people who are watching this might remember might even know who I'm talking to uh, back home in Africa and he started uh, casting me he said I bind you spirit uh, my made spirit that is speaking through him and I was telling him it is not Satan speaking wow. it is God speaking through us but because they, he never wanted such operations in the church and he wasn't uh, he doesn't believe he never believed in such operations of the church but mm. it is what happened mm. you see god would always have a way of proving himself if it is the voice of god mm -hmm. you don't have to fight it he will always prove himself what uh, this was one sunday the other sunday usually we ought to have gone to church at 4 a.m um, um there is this thing they call royal rangers they are the church security guard you said royal rangers royal rangers okay. yes they, are, they protect the church so um their leader went to to just check around the church at 4 a.m so that there is no breaking into the church mm -hmm. because you know in africa there's no security there was a poor church the windows were all wooden mm -hmm. and if you're not careful people will break in and steal church stuff oh. and like that so after he went around the church um, building and we, and he went to the children church, now the children church was actually built, um, was actually there, separated from the main church auditorium. Mm -hmm. So and it's, I, I, as he as he flash as he put on his flashlight to look at um, the children church, there were there was actually no window because it was still on construction under, under construction, mm -hmm. and he saw uh, according to his story he saw somebody. Um, gumming on the wall like a spider and and he, he, he looked like he, he wasn't seeing clearly so he pointed the light again and behold here was the church treasurer oh. you know suspended in the wall all naked and uh, so he screamed and there were neighbors the neighbor um, around the church area so they came and in Africa they called her started beating her and she began to confess that why people mm. are not succeeding in the church she has been responsible so when they count the mother church offering the gift to her she 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 do witchcraft on it that mm. nobody is able to able to succeed in the church so as time began to you know god began to confirm words after words and then the reality of my calling and purpose you know started to manifest um gradually and um, we've seen god walk in one way or the other and today by the grace of god i have proved that I am what I am called to be. Okay, great. Thank I definitely you. want to get more into like um, the culture of like you know um, Christianity in in Africa. But we have to take a quick break. We'll be right back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Welcome back to Beyond Focus TV. If you are just now tuning in, I'm your host, Victoria Steve, and we have the chance to speak with Prophet Frank Udu. He was telling us about, you know, the climate in um, Africa and how he got his start in prophesizing and in ministry. You came to New York and started Christ Peace Ministries, That's or? Correct. 
Oh, that's great. Correct. Tell us so, more about uh, Christ that. Peace Ministry is a ministry that we started with one member. I'm actually new in America, basically has been here for five years. Mm -hmm. And um, I had a leading uh, you know, while I was moving around nations, preaching the gospel. But when I got to America, uh, actually fresh in on ground, I was with one church and there was so much politics, uh, politics in the church and I wasn't really comfortable. And the Lord said, go ahead, it's time to raise an army for him. So um, I, of course, my wife and then we started with, on, a, on a straight church. We just started straight away with one person. Um, Sister Laura. One other person besides your One other your person family. besides mm -hmm. my wife and kids. And um, and uh, that was on the, on the 21st of August 2016. Mm. And we started without uh, knowing what the future holds, but I, we had faith in God that if he says it, he will bring it to pass. And today, by the grace of God, we've grown over 100 membership wow. strength. And um, we still believe in God, great things God is doing. And we've moved from one uh, level of growth to the other level of next uh, to, to different levels of growth and we've seen God um, do great things and um, God performing his words prophecies coming into manifestation people's um, spiritual life getting empowered and Jesus being glorified in their lives nice nice you yeah. can always um, see the evidence of God through your fruits and stuff like that's that that's correct so when um, you started the church in 2016 that's correct nice so you started this in New York or back in it's Nashville? always been uh, it was in New York uh, I think somewhere around Linden Boulevard and 193rd if I'm not mistaken okay that's, all, that's where we started and what denomination is the church uh, we are Pentecostals we are people of fire. Nice, nice. Oh, yeah. And was that the church that you grew up in? Oh, no, I, I grew up in and I grew I I grew up in the apostol apostolic church. It was some at the point the apostolic church, but but I encountered my salvation. Um, I got saved in the with the assemblies of God. Mm. Yeah. So how would you say? Um, so Christ Peace Ministries is your church. How would you say yeah, that? Nobody owns a church. It's God's church. Oh, yeah. You know. <laughs> I'm just the leader. You're right. My yeah. dad um, My dad says the same thing. He's a pastor of a church. He's oh, like, okay. it's not my church. It's God's church. That's you nice. know? So, That's nice. so um, how would you say the culture in your, um, the church that you're in right now is different from the church that you grew up in? The one that didn't, you know. Whenever God wants to start a new move, it must be different. It must be better. Every new move comes with more intensity, mm. more better revelation. Um, uh, we we far better because of our revelation of God and also understanding our purpose on earth. You know, God never um, assigned you with, uh, with a responsibility without giving you a pattern of mm. how you must run with the responsibility. So uh, we're just running our course. Nice, yeah. yeah. So, how would you say the landscape is different from, you know, your church in Africa? Like, how how is um, the climate for Christians uh, in Nigeria? Uh, uh, Christian Christianity in Africa is very intense in the sense that you really cannot stand in between the line. You got to define what you stand for, where you stand, mm. at, uh, because you see. The level of witchcraft activities is so intense that mm. if you are not firm with God, you're gonna get consumed with uh, witchcraft. Then, if you want to stay in witchcraft, you gotta be at your best because if you're not, you're gonna get crushed by something else. So, those who have chosen to follow the path of Christ are very committed to mm. the purpose and essence of their uh, Christian work with God. Uh, the demands um, of or the demands uh, on God and uh, and servants of God seems to be a little bit more intense than what it is in Africa. I would uh, in America, I beg your pardon. I would imagine because, like, um, in Nigeria, I'm pretty sure religion is like tied into the culture and like coming to Queens, having your church in Queens, do you feel, like, I don't know, like, frustrated that people are not as committed? No. Or... No, I, I'm not frustrated because when God gives you a message, um, one, if you're going to raise people, you must raise them from, you must bring them out of something mm. into something. You see, a good leader is one who has patience and who knows the whereabout, how to achieve his goal. 
without you know um, without um, breaking down or without um, feeling frust uh, frustrated God will always give you strategies on how to pass your message across and above all I have been trained and I've lived all my life doing this so I can break through any situation by wisdom you know the Bible says a house is built by wisdom you can do anything in, in God Nice. Yeah. Nice. So you travel. Um, you also travel doing. I travel extensively around the world, but I have, I have reduced my traveling because of the workload of pastoring. Oh. But yeah. I am in hot demand by the grace of God around the world. Nice, nice. So what? Oh, um, how? What are some of the countries that you've been to? I've been to almost all the continents of the world. Been in Europe, uh, Asia, been in America, of course. Been in the Caribbean, mm. and I've uh, been been to almost all the continents in the world. How have you noticed that other nations um, accept prophesizing? Like, do you feel like certain, like, because I could imagine, like, if you go to like Asia or like Asian countries, like, yeah. how how do they um, receive the, the, pro the prophetic ministry? Is a ministry that will sell anywhere. Mm. You see, it's it's one of the ministry that is difficult to deny anywhere because he, he, you you would always have evidence to to back up whatever you're doing. You see, the Bible says that people shall be willing in the days of His power. The kingdom of God is not preached by many words; it's preached by power demonstration. Where there is power, there is another you know, the willingness to follow. So once you you are you are doing what you're doing uh, with the support of God, then people would, the Bible said the people shall be willing in the days of His power. So once you are you're operating power and then the accuracy of what God has sent you for, people will definitely give you attention. Hmm. Yeah. So um, so your church is in Queens, That's right? correct. And we have two churches, as a matter of fact, in, in New York. We have also have a church in uh, in the Bronx. Oh, nice, yeah. nice. So yeah. uh, what I would love to do is, you know, talk more about your churches in Queens and the Bronx. But okay. first, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. We've been watching Beyond Focus TV. for everyone watching me right now and um, wherever you're watching us right now I release the power of God over your life there is a woman who is going to be watching this video you're going to be on the couch you're sitting on a three in one couch in your living room and you're going to I see like you you've been abandoned by the difficult situations around your house I don't really don't want to go into detail right now, but I hear the Lord said to me, He is sending help for you. There is someone whose immigration status has been held up. There is a release for you by favor. There is someone here whose job you're having a a, a serious police situation. There is a deliverance coming for you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. There is someone that is a frame of a murder case. I don't know the name Humphrey keep coming in my spirit. There is deliverance for you right now in the name of Jesus. I pray for you, whatever you are watching uh, beyond Focus TV right now, that the hand of God touch you, the hand of God deliver you. May the blood of Jesus heal you of every infirmity. Be delivered right now in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. I'm your host, Victoria Steve. And if you're just now tuning in, we've been talking to Prophet Frank Udo. Um, he's been telling us about his church in the Bronx and in Queens. That's correct. So that's amazing. Within three years, you went from a congregation of one to two, two churches. churches. That's, that's amazing. Correct. That is the growth of God right there. You know. <laughs> so how, how do you impact your communities within um, the Bronx and Queens? The, the first impact the church owes the world is the the lifestyle of the showing the love of God. Mm. You see, um, we could do all of the miracles we want to do, uh, we want to do, we could perform all the signs and wonders. If we lack love, we really cannot assess people. Mm. You know, everybody wants to um, 
uh, go to where they feel loved, where they feel value, where they feel respected. You know, I have gone through churches where uh, people, they tend to ridicule people or uh, abuse people instead of the, the message of love mm. to bring in people to God. In the, in the first place, the church is not, it's, not, it's like a hospital. You know, I say that all the time. It's like a hospital. Uh, you have to expect different kinds of people. Mm. You know, I try not to judge people by my standard. I, I try to carry on with everybody, even if you're not where I want you to be. I, by the grace of God, I am a pastor in the, by training. So I, the, the, that gives me the ability, you know, to uh, be able to see things from different perspectives with people. You see, today I am strong, another person might be down. And if I am today, if I'm in a place where, or in a place of strength today, I believe the purpose of strength is to be able to help someone who is not yet where I am to get uh, to get up to where I am right now, where, where I am at the moment. So um, we believe so much as a church uh, with the message of God's love, mm. loving people and um, loving them into righteousness, loving them into serving God, loving them into their place in God. We could speak all the tongues we want, we could do all of the miracles we want, but if the church lacks love, we will not really fulfill the purpose of God for the ministry. So, Christ Peace Ministry as a church, we are a people that love. We are a church that believe in the power of prayers. We are a church that believe in the Word of God, the practical side of the Word of God. We are a church that believe that with God, all things are possible. And um, that is just about the few things I can tell you about us. You just have to come in and experience God for yourself. Nice. nice. Yeah. So how do you feel about the climate of um, the church in America? Like, like, do you feel like the church in the general sense is not doing enough? Or do you feel like we're taking the back seat? I actually do think, honestly, if I was to speak out of, if I, if I was to speak um, out of my, my mind, I, Please, I, yes. if, I, if I was to be very honest, the church in America, thank God for America where um, we are free to to serve Jesus, to mm -hmm. serve God without any uh, any fear or intimidation. But I honestly feel like most of most ministries in America are sleeping. Mm. Um, that is why you go around a lot of churches are empty, and because there is nothing attracting people to church, and also the level of spiritual awareness in the church is really lacking. You see. Um, uh, the Bible says, "They that know their God, they shall be strong. They shall do exploits." Knowing God talks about know, having, knowing the mysteries, the mysteries behind God. Amos three verse seven says, "Surely the Lord will do nothing, but He will reveal His secret." So God has secret. Mm. So until we discover what are the secrets behind the system in America, we will not really triumph. So in that sense. Um, the church is, is in America is doing well, but we are lacking a little bit behind in the area of deliverance. That is why you see a lot of people are going through demonic activities, mm. demonic operation, and basically there is no one to help them. For instance, I just finished dealing with an issue of a boy in church. He's 24 years old. Um, he's been mentally unstable for the last 12 years. Mm. And what happens is this when the the, the attack comes on him. He acts like someone who is talking about Jesus. But his behavior does not reflect the lifestyle of someone who talks about Jesus. And according to the father, he said, this boy, they've taken him to several other churches. Other ministers said that uh, that is God walking through him. You see, you cannot mix light and darkness at the same time. Mm -hmm. If it is God, it, then it's got to be true. It's got to be real, you know, mm -hmm. until we we went into deliverance and the, the demon in him began to speak out. And today, by the grace of God, he has gotten himself for the very first time in 12 years. He has gotten himself without medical um, attention. He has gotten his, his stability. And we have a lot of other issues like that. They've been to different other ministries they were not able to be helped mm -hmm. by the grace of God and by the experience of our, of our ministry. We've been able to affect a lot of life. We've had issues. Cancers have been healed. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had a lot of issues. HIV AIDS have disappeared even on the cell phone. And we have incredible miracles. And, um, and uh, I think the church, we could do a little bit more in America, excuse me, if we are 
um, if we can you know, give more attention. And also, what I've observed, not being disrespectful to pastors, a lot of pastors are more concerned with what they can get from the people, and mm. they are not even concerned with helping the people out of their battles. Yeah. You see, when people are, they come to you and they experience freedom, they are bound to stay with you. Then, then, but you don't make it like a business where you, it's gotta be you. You gotta give me what I want first for me to give you what you're looking for. You see, all of these things are some of the errors I have noticed in the Church of God, uh, which is also affecting the Church in America. Mm -hmm. So we must return to the place of prayer. We must return to the place of um, seeking the the face of God and also mm -hmm. bringing back the glory of God. Not just talking many Simon, but there is no life. You know, bringing back the real glory of God where people just walk into the church and they get healed without mm -hmm. the pastor praying for them. We must bring back that glory mm -hmm. back into the church in America. Yeah, because, you know, God does miracles in the church. It sounds That's like he's doing miracles in Christ, um, Christ Peace Ministry. That's so correct. It's beautiful. You That's know? correct. So how can people get in contact with you? Um, of course, we are on social media. We are on Facebook, Christ Peace Ministries. And, of course, we have our website, www.christpeaceministry.org. www.christpeaceministries.org. You can go to our Facebook page. You can write us. Of course, our email is christpeaceministries at gmail.com. And you can as well contact us with the phone number 917-355-1334. Our services are as follows. In Queens Church, we have... Um, Two services. One is at 11 to um, 1, 1.30 1 p.m. And the second service is at 3 p.m. through 6 p.m. In our Bronx Church, the address is at um, 741 East 233rd Street. Our services is at 9 a.m. In, in, uh, in Bronx, New York. And uh, you can connect with any of the services. If you are going through spiritual um, and trouble, affliction, you're being attacked by demons, you're going through uh, things are not just working uh, in your life. There are people who have, I have, been, uh, I have seen a lot of persons with help out of suicide mm. because they were ignorant of the experiences around them. A lot mm. of lives, you are, uh, they, are, they, are, yeah, they are living lives 10 years behind the level where they ought to be because something is holding them bound spiritually. If you need a church where you will experience the fire of God, where you want to forcefully advance yourself in the place of prayer, the Christ Peace Ministries is the place to be. Thank you for watching tonight. If you missed any of our show, you can watch again Thursday night at 9 p.m. or you can watch online, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Um, tune in again next week for another amazing show of Beyond Focus TV. Beyond Focus TV show wants and needs your feedback. Did we blunder? Please let us know so we can improve. Was the show helpful to you? Drop us a note so we can share the success with our staff members. Is there something you think we could do better? We welcome new ideas and new approaches to old ideas. Do you have a great suggestion? Let us know and we'll work on it. If you would like to share your comments anonymously, please send us an email at info at beyondfocusmedia.com. If you want to get in touch with the executive producer directly, send him an email at gene at beyondfocusmedia.com. We really look forward to hearing from you. We really look forward to hearing from you.